you. It's my great pleasure to introduce our esteemed uh, guest, Dr. Rashid Yazami. Uh, Dr. Yazami is a distinguished figure in the world of battery technology and innovation, renowned for his groundbreaking work in the development of the lithium-ion battery, for which we are here to speak about today. Uh, born in Morocco and educated in France, uh, Dr. Yazami's journey in the field of electrochemistry has led to transformative contributions, particularly his invention of the graphite anode in the early 1980s. Uh, this pivotal innovation has revolutionized how we use and think about energy storage, uh, paving the way for proliferation of portable electronics and uh, electric vehicles. So Dr. Yazami's expertise and insights uh, um, uh, shall be valuable for today's session. Uh, we'll have his perspectives on the future of energy storage, uh, the evolving landscape. Um, we're incredibly fortunate to have him with us to provide his unique insights. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Yazami. Sure. Thank Today's you for having me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Today's you. moderator is Dr. Rahul Balavalkar. Dr. Balavalkar is a prominent figure in the field of energy storage and grid integration. He is recognized globally for his extensive work and contributions to the renewable energy sector. Um, his career is marked with the passionate advocacy for sustainable energy solutions and his expertise in energy storage, uh, smart grid technologies and policy development is uh, well known. Uh, he's played a pivotal role in the shaping of energy policies and market strategies, both in India and internationally. Um, and uh, he'll support us in contextualizing Dr. Yazami's talk for the Indian context today. He's also the president of the India Energy uh, Storage Alliance uh, that you may check out uh, after this conversation. Uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat and uh, Rahul will take them up with Dr. Yazami. Um, I'll open the stage for uh, Dr. Valavalka just yet, and post which we'll hear from Dr. Yasmi. Uh, Vishal, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Vishal as well as uh, the Capacity Building Commission for hosting this series of Karma Yogi talks, and we could not have a, a better speaker than Professor Rashid Yasmi for this. Uh, he's, as uh, Vishal mentioned, uh, he's one of the five uh, uh, famous five uh, who are credited for the invention of the lithium ion battery, which is changing the world. Uh, it started with impacting the uh, mobility solutions with mobile phones, with portable uh, uh, devices. But now uh, I think lithium ion batteries are influencing life for everyone, right from stationary storage to e-mobility. And uh, uh, Professor Rashid invented the anode material in uh, with graphite in 1980s. Uh, but the journey for lithium ion invention started probably in 1970, early uh, 75, 76, with Professor Stan Whittingham working on the rechargeable lithium metal batteries. Then, uh, along with uh, Professor Rashid, Professor Goodenough, and uh, Professor uh, Akira Yoshino working on uh, uh, cathode as well as uh, electrolyte uh, innovations. And then finally, Sony uh, commercializing the batteries with Yoshio Nishi uh, uh, taking lead in 1991. So it has been a long journey. And since then, we are seeing actually lithium ion batteries almost uh, reinvented every few years. Uh, perhaps now we think that last uh, 20 years were uh, focused a lot on uh, innovation on the cathode side, whereas the innovation with Professor Rashid made on anode side has been the backbone for more than 90% of the lithium ion batteries. Uh, uh, but now we are seeing uh, possible uh, uh, focus over next uh, decade also on improvements on the anode side with silicon or going back to lithium metal uh, uh, and also a lot more uh, innovation is remaining in the uh, lithium ion space. Uh, and at the same time, a lot of work which has happened on commercialization of lithium ion batteries that can also become instrumental in commercialization of many other battery chemistries such as sodium ion batteries, which are also expected to hold uh, promise in the coming decades. Absolutely. Now, this is very important for but India because India is right at the cusp mm. of uh, yes. Uh, starting the battery uh, manufacturing uh, revolution uh, uh, three years uh, back uh, with uh, 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 can you please uh, mute uh, uh, sorry yeah so um, uh, three years back with the creation of the production link incentive program for advanced chemistry cell batteries uh, we have started uh, seeing tremendous interest in getting into battery manufacturing uh, uh, in India uh, currently, as per India Energy Storage Alliance estimate, we do expect that by 27, India will cross 50 gigawatt hour cell manufacturing. And by 2030, we should have more than 100 gigawatt hour of cell no, 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 manufacturing. No, 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 no. And we are looking at possibly continuing like to go. 
நம்ம கேண்டீன் ரோட் சிக்ஸ் பாத்துக்கலாம் மியூட் अदर्स மேபி एज अ மாடரேட் एज अ होस्ट कैन यू डू दैट थैंक यू uh so as part of uh, uh, this uh, transition we are also looking at setting up a uh, uh, various component and supply chain ecosystem in india where already companies like epsilon carbon have started working on making uh, graphite material for uh, anode and similarly many other companies are, uh, are going to play a key role so i think the journey of professor rashid yasmi is going to be very inspirational for all of us and on this uh, uh, webinar we have many scientists as well as uh, Uh, bureaucrats present so all of you are going to also play a key role uh, so i think uh, professor rashid's uh, journey and some of the innovation what is still working on in terms of looking at next generation batteries as well as, well as role of artificial intelligence is going to be inspirational for uh, many of you and also i think bureaucrats can uh, uh, take a uh, leap from uh, his experience and looking at what role you can play in helping in commercialization of these technologies as well as making india a global hub for uh, r&d manufacturing and adoption of these technologies so without further delay i would like to hand it over to professor rashid for uh, his uh, uh, presentation and then i'll follow up with a certain q and a so as vishal mentioned if as the audience if you have any questions please keep on typing those in chat window uh, after the initial round of questions i will go to the chat and i'll pick up a few of the questions uh, so handing it over to you professor rashid Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Rahul, for the nice presentation, and uh, thank you also, Vishal, for having me. And I would like to thank the Capacity Building Commission for the opportunity actually to talk to uh, Indian civil servants and uh, uh, just for their capacity building on this area of uh, lithium-ion batteries that is uh, becoming uh, so important all over the world, and of course. India as a giant uh, country with uh, over 1.4 billion people we expect India will be one of the key players in the next uh, decade in this area so because the market is there and also uh, India has a very good uh, 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 education system and uh, research uh, uh, institutions and uh, I think uh, uh, we will hear lots uh, in the future about you know the contribution of india to industry and application of lithium ion batteries so the title of my presentation is uh, lithium ion batteries for electromobility so i will mostly focus on that that aspect as uh, dr rahul mentioned uh, at the beginning in the early 90s uh, the uh, market uh, for lithium ion battery was uh, driven by the uh, uh, mobile electronics like uh, cellular phones and uh, pcs and uh, small systems and then uh, the, the uh, it has been spread i mean the application to uh, electric mobility starting from uh, small uh, systems like uh, uh, e-bikes and uh, e-scooters and two wheelers three wheelers uh, electric cars and uh, i think the publicity brought by tesla was very good for the uh, uh, lithium ion battery industry they they showed actually that uh, yeah you can make a profitable business in electric uh, uh, electric mobility uh, space so uh, please can you go to the next slide please yeah so this is the outlook of my presentation i will uh, introduce uh, briefly uh, uh, lithium ion batteries uh, the chemistry and also the uh, uh, the markets in general and uh, focusing uh, on the electric vehicle market and uh, i will uh, show some of the current uh, limitations and where the uh, uh, r&d uh, is uh, now mostly focused on to find the new solutions for some of the limitations of lithium ion batteries because there is still space of course for improving the the, the chemistry and the battery management systems and so on and then i will uh, discuss some of the solutions for these uh, uh, the current battery uh, limitations uh, in our uh, lab here kvi is uh, my company I, i've been running kvi for now uh, 12 years and um, the company is located in singapore and uh, it was a startup company from uh, nanyang technological university in singapore and uh, uh, been working uh, together with uh, my colleagues, professors at NTU and uh, 
uh, <coughs> National University of Singapore, NUS, uh, uh, you know, on the fundamentals of uh, battery materials and battery management systems. So I will show you what uh, the, 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 the solution that we are uh, providing now, developing as a part of uh, the R&D, and then I go to the summary. Next slide, please. Okay, it's working. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Rao. <laughs> All right. So just briefly, I would like to uh, uh, explain the uh, operation mechanism of a, a battery. So it's a rechargeable battery, or we call it also secondary battery, in the sense that uh, not only it can provide energy to uh, uh, outside circuits, but also it can be recharged using a charger, as you know. Uh, so basically, the way how it works is that uh, when a battery is uh, just made, a fresh battery, uh, lithium ions are mostly uh, present in the cathode material. So the cathode is the uh, the plus pole of the battery, and uh, it has two types of cathode materials that I will show you. Uh, one is the oxides, like uh, lithium cobalt oxide, lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, and also uh, uh, lithium manganese spinel, which is an oxide, or it is also a lithium uh, phosphate, uh, metal phosphate, uh, such as lithium iron phosphate, which is uh, usually called as LFP, lithium iron phosphate. Okay, so this is the cathode. So during the charge, lithium ions are extracted from the cathode and uh, they tra are transferred to the electrolyte. The electrolyte is the liquid medium which is between the anode and the cathode. So the anode and the cathode are wet or in contact with the uh, electrolyte and the uh, electrolyte usually is uh, uh, stored in uh, uh, a micro uh, porous uh, polymer separator. That's a uh, uh, mechanically uh, separate the anode and the cathode and then the lithium ion will diffuse or that, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, electrolytes and go to the the, the anode which is uh, graphite and uh, basically the graphite will uh, uh, intake lithium is intercalated between the the graphite uh, graphene layers uh, so the graphite is the anode which is the minus pole of the battery so there are three major components in the battery, the cathode, which is uh, an oxide or phosphate, uh, the anode, which is basically graphite or other carbon material, silicon, and the electrolyte, which is a, a solution of a, a lithium salt, mostly lithium hexafluorophosphate, and uh, 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 an organic uh, uh, solvent, uh, mostly carbonate, like uh, ethylene carbonate, the dimethyl uh, ethyl carbonate, and so on. Okay, so so during the charge, when lithium is uh, taken out from the cathode, the the voltage of the, uh, uh, the the cathode is increasing, and when the lithium is intercalated into the graphite, the graphite potential or voltage is decreasing. So the difference between the plus and minus during the charge is increasing. And basically, it goes from uh, uh, about uh, 3 volts to 4.2 volts at the end of charge if the, uh, the cathode is an oxide, and uh, between uh, 2.8 to 3.6 uh, uh, volts if the uh, cathode is uh, based on uh, phosphate. Okay, so now the battery is charged. We have uh, taken lithium from the cathode, put it in the anode. And then during the discharge, the reverse reaction is taking place, which means that the lithium is deintegrated from the graphite, go into the electrolyte, diffuse in the electrolyte, and then uh, it's captured by the cathode. In order to do that, of course, uh, during the discharge, electrons are produced. As lithium is deintegrated from the uh, cathode, there is an electron that is emitted. That electron will circulate in a an external circuit, which is the charger, okay? And then the electron is uh, uh, injected in the, 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 ano the, the, the anode side, and the, the combination of lithium ion and electron makes kind of metallic lithium intercalated between the, the, the graphene layers. 
Now, during the discharge, uh, the uh, reverse reaction is taking place. Lithium is uh, deintegrated de from <clears throat> the anode, and there, there is an electron emitted from the anode. That electron will circulate in your device, can be a, 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 cellar, a cell phone or an electric vehicle, whatever will be the, the load. And then the electron will uh, uh, reach the, uh, the cathode, combines with the, the lithium ion coming from the electrolyte, and this, uh, the lithium ion is intercalated between the, uh, uh, the cathode, uh, in, within the cathode structure. Okay, so it's a redox reactions, uh, oxido reduction reactions on both anode and cathode. But the interesting thing is that the amount of lithium, total amount of lithium in the battery is uh, constant and especially in the electrolyte. If there is no side reaction, uh, as soon as one electron is produced or uh, 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 put inside the, uh, the uh, electrolyte, another lithium ion is uh, uh, consumed either on the anode or the cathode side. So the concentration of lithium in the electrolyte is constant, it doesn't change, okay? So this is how it works and the, the, the charge and discharge process can be repeated uh, many, many hundreds of times or sometimes uh, according to the, the, uh, the materials that is used and the conditions of charge and discharge, it can be uh, more than 1,000 or 2,000 cycles that can be uh, achieved, uh, you know, using the, the, this uh, lithium ion battery. Next slide, please. Okay, so this slide shows the uh, crystal structure, the schematics of the, the most uh, common uh, cathode materials. From the, on the left-hand side, we have the layered lithium cobalt oxide, but you can replace cobalt with uh, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, what we call NMC. So the structure is the same. You have uh, metal oxide uh, slabs that are in the blue color, and uh, between the, 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 the slabs or the layers, lithium ions in the green color are, you know, uh, uh, occupying the uh, octahedral sites in this uh, structure. So uh, the, good, uh, the interesting thing is that the oxide slab, the blue structure, is very, very uh, stable. So uh, it's a sandwich of the metal. It can be, uh, again, a cobalt, nickel, manganese, and uh, uh, surrounded by two layers of oxygen. Uh, so that makes uh, the metal oxide MO2 uh, slab. And uh, between the slabs, uh, lithium can move very freely, very rapidly between the layers, so to enable the charge and discharge of the battery. The other structure is called the spinel structure, it's a cubic structure, and uh, it's typical is a lithium manganese uh, spinel, LIMN204, and uh, some uh, substitution of uh, manganese with uh, uh, other uh, uh, metals uh, like nickel or cobalt and so on has been already tested, and uh, uh, it works quite well, but um, this battery, I mean, the spinel usually has a, a higher voltage than the uh, layered structure, the uh, lithium metal oxide uh, previous structure. So this one, uh, the lithium um, uh, manganese spinel, the, the voltage can be uh, as high as 4.5 volt, where the uh, uh, lithium metal oxide, the layered structure, the voltage at the end of charge is uh, 4.2, 4.3 volt. The third structure is the olivine <coughs> structure. Uh, or this is an orthorhombic uh, structure where we have a channel. So lithium can move between channels and the metal is uh, in the octahedral sites and the tetrahedral sites, uh, the iron and the lithium. Uh, lithium is green in the, between the, the, the uh, channels along the, the B direction. So lithium can move very fast in that direction, enabling the uh, lithium iron phosphate cathode to be uh, working. And the uh, lithium iron phosphate based uh, battery, the voltage is lower, is uh, about uh, uh, the, uh, the average voltage is 3.3, uh, 3.2 uh, to 3.4 volts. So it's lower than the 
layered oxide and uh, the spinel uh, metal oxide. And uh, for this reason, the LFP-based uh, uh, lithium-ion batteries has a lower energy density. Uh, energy density is uh, expressed in uh, watt hours per kg. Okay, so uh, and uh, the uh, uh, battery based on uh, lithium ion phosphate energy density is lower than 200 watt hour per kg, whereas the batteries based on uh, uh, layered structure oxide can go higher than 250, even 270 or 80 uh, watt hour per kg. And this is where actually the, the lots of uh, work is now currently uh, carried out to increase the energy density and hopefully by uh, maybe in the next uh, four or five years we will hear batteries that uh, where energy density is exceeding uh, 300 watt hour per kg and uh, the cathode material will be one of the components that will uh, improve the energy density of the battery. Next slide please. Ah, graphite. So the graphite is, uh, as uh, in the introduction, uh, Dr. Raoul and uh, uh, Pichal uh, they said, this is my invention. Uh, yes, I mean graphite. Uh, the lithium intercalation into graphite was known since the 60s, but it was chemical intercalation, not electrochemical. What I brought, actually, I was the first to show that uh, we can intercalate lithium ions between the graphene layers. You can see the graphene layers. The, uh, uh, the, the sphere, the small balls are uh, carbon. It's a, a monoatomic uh, structure. It has only carbon. And carbon uh, uh, atoms are organized within the graphene layer in uh, 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 honeycomb. I mean, uh, uh, structure, you can see the uh, hexagons of uh, graph, uh, carbon materials, uh, carbon atoms. And then uh, this is one layer, which we call the graphene. And the next slide shows the, uh, the three-dimensional uh, graphite, uh, graphite structure, where we have uh, uh, on the left hand, uh, ABC layers of uh, uh, graphene stacked uh, on the top of each other with a sequence of A, B, A, B, or A, B, C, A, B, C. I don't want to enter into the detail, but this is the, the crystal structure of uh, graphite, the uh, uh, hexagonal graphite, which is the one that we uh, shown in the left-hand uh, uh, figure. On the right hand, you have the uh, structure of the lithiated graphite uh, with the uh, composition of LIC6, which means that's uh, every six atoms of carbon host uh, one lithium. This is the average structure. So uh, by when lithium is intercalated between the graphene layers, there is a volumetric expansion of about 10%. So we are going from uh, say 3.35 uh, angstrom uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a graphite to 3.7 uh, something angstrom. So there's like 10% increase in volume and this is the most important characteristic of graphite is that the volumetric expansion is very small which enable actually the, the battery to operate if uh, uh, unlike uh, other materials which mostly anode materials like silicon or tin or lead or other or silver who can alloy with the uh, lithium the volumetric expansion can be more than uh, 200%, 300% which means that this bat these uh, materials cannot be used in practical battery because of the huge volumetric expansion. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, the, when uh, uh, the interesting thing also is that this is how I discovered. Uh, please wait just one second. Come back to slide number five, please. Yeah, this one. Uh, six. Okay. Uh, the when lithium is integrated into graphite. Uh, the graphite uh, uh, material change in color. So there are two major colors that are known. One is the blue color, which is Li half lithium every six carbon or LiC12. This is blue color. And the LiC6 structure is a uh, gold color. And actually my first uh, 
when I discovered the graphite anode first time I opened the electrochemical cell and I found that uh, the graphite uh, turned from the gray or black color to gold color and I understood at that time yes we I was able actually to uh, intercalate uh, for the first time uh, lithium uh, only lithium without any solvent into the graphite structure next slide please Okay, so lithium ion batteries come with different form factors. Uh, the most common one, uh, the main form factor is the cylindrical cell, and uh, it has a hard case. And uh, this cylindrical cell uh, was the most, uh, the first uh, lithium ion battery production by Sony in the uh, early 90s was a cylindrical cell like this one. Uh, different uh, uh, characteristics like the diameter and the height. But the most popular one was the 18650, 18 millimeter in diameter and uh, 650 millimeter or six point, sorry, 6.5 centimeter in height. Okay, so that was the most common, uh, most popular lithium ion battery, 18650, and then other cylindrical cell were developed like the 21700 and the many other form factors cylindrical cylindrical cells are interesting because because of the heart uh, case they can sustain uh, uh, an increase in uh, internal pressure so this uh, form factor is uh, 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 by inherently safer uh, because the the, the, the built-in pressure can uh, uh, somehow affect the the, the, uh, the geometry of the, the cell or even uh, sometimes have uh, some leak of the electrolyte. The other uh, form factor is the uh, prismatic, uh, prismatic, which means the uh, rectangular. The faces are rectangular, uh, the three faces, and uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, they come in two uh, different, I would say, technologies. One is the hard case, uh, prismatic, and the pouch set. So the pouch cell is uh, mo uh, mostly the one that is used in uh, uh, most of the uh, small devices like uh, uh, electric uh, uh, phone, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, 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 smartphones and uh, computers and so on. Whereas the hard case uh, is mostly used for electric mobility because of uh, the hard case the uh, the pressure can be uh, sustained and uh, the system is uh, more stable so uh, if you compare the two form factors of course when we assemble cells uh, in series and in parallel in a battery pack uh, the prismatic uh, form factor enables actually a much better volumetric uh, feeling of the, the battery pack which means that we have a little uh, uh, volume that is not used. Whereas in uh, uh, cylindrical cells, there is always about 30% of the volume that is not filled with the battery. So uh, it means that uh, in general, uh, the volumetric energy density of a battery that is uh, cylindrical uh, shape has a lower, it's lower than the volumetric uh, energy density for uh, prismatic cells keeping the same chemistry and uh, by the way the uh, uh, volumetric energy density is expressed in watt hour per liter okay so in uh, whatever the form factor we have uh, the stacking of the anode and the cathode either they are rolled in the uh, cylindrical cell to, to make a cylinder or uh, uh, Multi, -cell, multi cells that are the stacked on the top of each other or the uh, Z folding, which means that we, we do Z form for uh, anode and cathode separated by electrolyte. And once we do this, there is a step where the electrolyte is injected in the cell. Electrolyte again is a liquid uh, medium and uh, it's uh, injected and then it wets the, uh, uh, the separator, and then the battery we can we can measure voltage. Without electrolytes, of course, there is no voltage. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so I would like just briefly to uh, tell you a little bit about the uh, uh, invention of lithium-ion batteries, just to give credit to the other inventors. Next slide, please. So this picture shows uh, four uh, inventors or engineers, uh, uh, the recipients of the uh, uh, Draper Prize in 2014. The Draper Prize is given by the National Academy of Engineering in Washington, D.C., and it is considered a Nobel Prize in engineer for engineering. So from left to right, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Akira Yoshino from Asahi Chemicals, uh, and uh, Professor John, John Godinov, uh, who unfortunately passed away last year, and uh, Mr. Uh, Yoshio Nishi uh, from Sony, and uh, myself. Okay, so uh, just to uh, briefly uh, give you uh, about the history, by the end of the 70s and early 80s, both uh, John Godinov and I developed uh, the cathode for John and the anode for myself. And unfortunately, we didn't know each other. Uh, Dr. Uh, Goodenough was at that time in, uh, 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 in the UK. Uh, I was in Grenoble. I just started my PhD. I was uh, 26 years old. So I didn't have a chance to meet him. And uh, otherwise, the first uh, prototype of lithium ion battery would have been done in, uh, in Europe. Instead, the, uh, there were in the 80s, a uh, tremendous work on developing a rechargeable lithium battery. And uh, Dr. Yoshino was the first to make a prototype, a working prototype of a, a battery using the uh, cathode from uh, uh, John Godinov, the lithium cobalt oxide, and an anode that is close to graphite. It was not graphite, it was just carbon, uh, disordered carbon. And uh, so that was the first time ever. Uh, it was in uh, around 19. Uh, 85, when the first lithium-ion battery prototype was uh, produced. And then uh, Sony uh, uh, worked also hard on improving the, the, uh, the manufacturing technologies and also the performance. And in 1991, Sony launched the first commercial lithium-ion battery, and it was used for a device called the Walkman, which is a... a an audio system that I used I mean, uh, in the 80s, very popular. And then uh, the, the, the lithium-ion battery uh, uh, experienced a huge uh, uh, commercial uh, and industrial uh, success until today. Next slide, please. So this is the Draper Prize, okay? So just uh, briefly, the Draper Prize was, uh, uh, it's like a Nobel Prize. It uh, recognizes those who have been contributed to the advancements of engineering and public education to serve humanity. So very, when I received it, I was really very humbled that somehow without knowing it, I served humanity. But uh, anyway, now people uh, are using their cell phone daily and uh, inside the, any cell phone, whatever the cathode material, the anode is the graphite. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this Draper Prize started uh, first in uh, 1989, and uh, uh, this slide uh, should be updated because uh, uh, after 2018, there have been many. So everything that we are using now in the high-tech uh, space is uh, has been uh, somehow recognized by the Draper Prize, uh, Turbo Engine, uh, uh, satellite communication, uh, uh, optical fibers, internet, GPS, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, so the lithium-ion batteries were recognized in 2014, and then uh, followed by the uh, LED, and then uh, the algorithm, uh, the Turbi algorithm, C, C++, and so on. So it's really everything that solves a big problem for humanity in engineering space has been recognized by the uh, Draper Prize. Next, please. Now, after the Draper Prize in 2019, three of my colleagues uh, were uh, re received the, 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 the Nobel Prize. And John Godinoff, uh, who, as I said, developed the first uh, lithium cobalt and lithium nickel uh, oxide uh, 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 cathode materials, 
and also he also developed the lithium ion phosphate. So outstanding professor, very creative, and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, uh, he passed away last year at age 100. Okay, and uh, when uh, he received the, the Nobel Prize in 2019, he broke a record of the oldest man in the history of the no uh, Nobel Prize to receive the, the, the Nobel Prize. He was 97 at that time. In the middle, we have a Professor Stanley Whittingham, and the Stanley uh, he, uh, actually came with the concept of uh, intercalation materials, uh, lithium intercalation materials, and uh, he come with this concept to say, uh, if we want to make a rechargeable battery, anode and or the cathode should be an intercalation material. And he has absolutely, he's absolutely right. Of course, uh, the uh, prototype he developed was not practical battery because the, the cathode at this time was uh, the, the titanium disulfide and the, uh, the anode is metallic lithium. And this uh, chemistry didn't make it in the market because of different reasons. Energy density is uh, only two volt battery, and the energy density was very low, and plus some issues actually with the uh, metallic lithium. Metallic lithium tends to make dendrites, and uh, uh, the battery safety is a uh, concern when uh, uh, lithium metal is used as the anode. On the right hand, uh, Dr. Uh, Akira Yoshino, I just mentioned. Uh, his uh, contribution to uh, uh, be the first uh, to uh, uh, make a working prototype lithium ion battery, very creative. And uh, he also was the one to uh, suggest the use of aluminum for the uh, uh, coat, I mean, the, 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 uh, the cathode material, the aluminum uh, sheet uh, for the, co the, the current collector in the, uh, the the, uh, no, the cathode material. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Just less than a month ago, we had another big event called the uh, Vin Future Prize. And uh, we were uh, four scientists to receive the grand prize of the Vin Future. This is in uh, uh, Vietnam. Uh, on the left hand, uh, this picture, uh, the, this is the president of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, uh, who came in person to give us the, the award. Uh, from left to right, uh, after the president of uh, Vietnam, uh, we have uh, Professor Mar Martin Green. Uh, he's uh, the one who developed the, the highest efficient, efficient uh, photovoltaic cell. Uh, close to 20, between 20 and 25 percent efficiency, uh, 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 revolutionary inventions he developed. He's from uh, uh, Australia. Uh, to his left, uh, we have uh, Professor uh, Stanley Whittingham, uh, I just mentioned, uh, myself, and uh, Dr. Yoshino. So this prize uh, was the recognition again to the invention of uh, number one, a very highly efficient uh, energy photovoltaic energy generation, electric energy generation, and for the three of us for the uh, energy storage part. So that was a big, big event uh, less than a month ago in uh, Hanoi, in Vietnam. So this is just to uh, show that actually behind any invention there are a human being and the people who have been uh, working very hard to uh, find a solution to a major problem that uh, of interest uh, to humanity. Next slide, please. All right, so this is the, this uh, summarizes the main applications of lithium ion batteries. So uh, this diagram has uh, two axes. The uh, X axis is the uh, amount of energy that we uh, want to, uh, uh, that the system will be using and it's expressed in kilowatt hours. And the uh, Y axis is the power that the system requires and it's uh, uh, expressed in a kilowatt, okay? So if we start from uh, the bottom left, we have the mobile electronics. Uh, we need a few uh, watt hours, um, less than 100 watt hours in the system. And uh, also for the uh, electric bicycles, yeah, the, the amount of watt hours is a few uh, hundreds. 
And then when we go a little bit more to the right, we have electric scooters. Now uh, the uh, amount of uh, watt hours is close to uh, one to two kilo watt hours. And then uh, we go higher, we have electric cars with uh, energy uh, range between 20 to 50 or even 100 kilowatt hours. And then the, the charging time is uh, the power which goes to the charging time is about uh, 90 minutes. And then we have for other higher energy systems, buses, uh, uh, trucks and uh, trains and so on. Everything that moves uh, can be now powered with the lithium ion batteries. Uh, we have also the, uh, in the lower power systems, it's the residential use for uh, energy from photovoltaics. Uh, uh, generation and uh, uh, this is becoming more and more uh, pub uh, publicized or might be more used because the, the cost of uh, both uh, the photovoltaic panels and also the batteries has dropped uh, significantly the last uh, decade so it's become uh, this solution uh, for homes to combine uh, photovoltaics and uh, battery storage has become affordable. And then we go to higher systems like uh, the energy uh, storage uh, for big buildings, stores and factories. So uh, this uh, will use uh, solar energy, wind energy and other uh, renewable sources of energy to uh, power uh, communities and uh, uh, also plants and uh, housing and so on. So uh, myself, I'm now installing a system like this in my home in France, because I am convinced that yes, we can do a lot of economy and uh, also uh, reduce the amount of uh, gasoline uh, in, uh, in the energy uh, production. So this will help, of course, the uh, uh, cleaning the air and uh, also uh, uh, reduces the uh, 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 <clears throat> greenhouse gases emission that contribute to the global warming of the climate. So all of this, uh, the trend is uh, very strong and I think uh, the, this is why uh, India among the other giant countries are looking at this solution for energy, I mean clean energy, the, uh, sustainable energy production and energy storage. Next slide please. Okay, so this is the just forecast of the lithium ion battery markets. If you look at the right hand, so in uh, uh, 2021, the production was about uh, 430 gigawatt hours. Uh, and uh, in uh, 2030, it's expected to reach uh, 2.4 terawatt hours and even uh, higher because this uh, uh, forecast was in 2022 and uh, lots of things have changed. So anyway, the, the uh, take home message here is that this industry, the lithium ion battery industry is uh, uh, growing by uh, double digits uh, growth rate, 20 to 25% every year. It's huge. So uh, people who uh, invest now in lithium ion battery uh, can only make money because uh, the demand is very strong. And uh, on the left hand is uh, how these uh, uh, applications, I mean, uh, in uh, industrial electro, uh, energy storage systems, automobile and uh, electronic devices. And you can see that actually the part of electronic devices is decreasing. So by 2030, it will be only 3% of uh, lithium ion battery production uh, is for mobile uh, electronics. Uh, when in uh, the beginning, in uh, 1991, it was 100%. So it has been decreasing since because of other applications, including uh, electric mobility and energy storage. Next slide, please. So for electric vehicles, of course, we are thinking about different uh, systems from two wheelers, small cars uh, for, and uh, also uh, small trucks for uh, goods transportation. 
the international transportation, big trucks, and also buses, and add uh, trains, and uh, even uh, uh, you have certainly seen the uh, the drones and uh, even uh, small airplanes and uh, helicopters. So now the uh, space is open to uh, uh, batteries for uh, you know, powering uh, uh, aircraft in the future. We can we can see this developed more and more. So today, uh, some uh, prototype of uh, uh, aircraft can uh, uh, operate for one hour and have a range of about uh, uh, 300 kilometers to 500 kilometers per charge. So it's not too bad, and this will be only uh, increasing because, as I said, for uh, uh, this uh, application in electric mobility, we need to have higher energy density uh, to enable longer uh, driving range. And uh, the driving range have been increasing actually uh, uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, some of the Tesla cars uh, can go up to 600 miles now. And some in China claim 1,000 kilometers. It's possible, but uh, uh, with the current batteries, we have to have a, a very heavy and very bulky battery pack. So this is not the best uh, solution. So that's why the need for uh, increasing energy density, which means for the same amount of energy in kilowatt hours, we have a battery that are lighter. This is very, very important. So the other thing that uh, is important for the electric mobility is the charging time. Of course, we we want to charge batteries uh, uh, as fast as possible because uh, the current uh, 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 electric cars, I'm mean, sorry, internal combustion cars, you go to a gas station and you can fill your tank in maybe 10 minutes and you can uh, drive for... Uh, 600 plus kilometers. Uh, today, there is no technology, no existing technology that enables to fully charge a battery in 10 minutes and give you 600 uh, kilometers uh, range, driving range. So that's another area of uh, uh, R&D, which we are working on, and I will uh, illustrate this later in my presentation. So next slide shows uh, the trends for the market for electric uh, vehicles uh, from uh, 2010 to 2030. So by 2030, it is expected that uh, on the road, there will be between 20 million to 25 million uh, electric vehicles on the roads. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the rate of increase is uh, uh, very high uh, since, uh, the last, since uh, 2025. Uh, the, the, it was like now increasing exponentially especially in China. Uh, China is leading uh, this effort, uh, industrial effort, but of course uh, Europe is following and the North America is coming very strong. Uh, so of course with the, the case of uh, Tesla, which is the most known uh, uh, EV manufacturers in North America. Uh, in Europe, uh, the, uh, there, there have been uh, uh, an act that has been passed that is, says that by 2035, there will be no internal combustion car produced in Europe. So all cars will be, whatever the cars or vehicles will be electrical. So that's why uh, there is uh, now a transition for uh, giant uh, uh, car manufacturers uh, in Germany, in France, in Italy, especially, uh, and uh, the UK <clears throat> to uh, produce electric vehicles. It's a Really, we can call it a revolution in the uh, uh, car industry that this uh, shift from internal combustion to uh, electric vehicles. <clears throat> it poses some, uh, of course, issues. Uh, as I said, uh, the, uh, uh, the driving range and also the, the charging time. But still, the, 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 <coughs> this, this uh, those applies. And uh, uh, in uh, 20 last year, uh, the uh, uh, the amount of cars that have been uh, sold in France was uh, 3x higher than the year before, 2022. So the, the trend is exponential. And I think uh, India will be also part of this uh, the trend in the future, uh, of course, because um, 
not only the economical, but also the environmental aspects. So uh, EV chargers, of course, this is another industry that is uh, developing very fast. Uh, most of the chargers now come between 20 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt. And of course, uh, uh, they are, this is the, the main uh, product that can be found in the, in the, uh, uh, the infrastructure, the charging infrastructure. And uh, of course, Tesla, they have the so-called uh, supercharger, which is uh, 250 kilowatt. And uh, 250 kilowatt, theoretically, should be able to charge the uh, Tesla car with 100 kilowatt hours in the uh, in about uh, 60 or 65 minutes. But this is not the case, and I will discuss this later. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So the uh, market for electric vehicle charger is also growing very fast, and I think this is an activity where uh, India should be also involved in uh, uh, addition and parallel to the development of uh, uh, electric vehicle. We have to have an infrastructure for the uh, uh, chargers. And it's very important because uh, that uh, make people who want to invest in uh, electric car they they don't uh, they know that there is a, a an infrastructure and a, a network where they can easily find a charger within uh, 10 kilometers so there is less uh, this anxiety to uh, run out of uh, uh, of uh, juice uh, uh, because of the battery uh, fully discharged uh, next slide please so this is the the other very simple slide that I would like to show you uh, by 2027, it means in a couple of years from now, the uh, market of charger will be about $27 uh, billion, and uh, it's increasing by 34, to close to 35% a year. This is a huge, huge uh, business. It's even higher than uh, the, the growth uh, uh, rate is uh, higher than uh, the batteries. Okay, so the message here is that yes, India should also look at the uh, uh, the charger business in the future because uh, 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 it's increasing very fast and the uh, industry who uh, make a, a reliable and a high performance charger will make a lot of money. Next slide, please. Okay, so the other application, as I said, is the energy storage for uh, many uh, systems, uh, starting from homes, uh, from uh, uh, transmission and distribution equipment, uh, re re renewable energy, especially uh, wind and solar energy in factories, in the buildings and the commercial facilities. So uh, energy storage will be another a major uh, part of, of the, uh, the market for lithium-ion batteries. Uh, again, this is uh, number one for the uh, environmental aspect, but also for economical, because the, the kilowatt hours produced from uh, uh, solar energy and uh, wind will be much cheaper uh, than the, from gasoline or from any other uh, carbon-based uh, hydrocarbons. Next slide, please. Sir, yes, I mean, yeah, just wanted to check uh, yes. how long time you have, because originally we had scheduled till 11.30, but I know you still have a lot to talk about the KBI and other things. So. Uh, yes, but, yes. Well, look, I mean, uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like I haven't looked at the, uh, the, uh, the time. It's almost now here, uh, 2 p.m. I can still uh, talk for another uh, maybe 20 minutes, if this is okay. The group yeah, or sure. is it okay? Okay, so yeah. I will uh, try to be a little bit faster. So this yeah, is we just for, the, uh, for some questions because I already people have started typing some questions in the chat. So if that's okay, okay, we'll okay. Ahead. Well, Doctor Doctor Rahul, you can interrupt me anytime to uh, if you have questions, I can I can address the questions. Uh, no, 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 or we can, we can, can go ahead. Uh, Actually, some of the things okay, which we okay, talk ahead. about with KVI, I think that is of great interest to many people in okay. the participants. So I want okay. to give you. Okay. 
All right, so this is another slide to convince you that, you know, for the, uh, uh, whatever the application, the uh, growth rate of the business is uh, uh, going very high, uh, you know, for uh, battery production, either in, uh, in gigawatt hours or in dollars. Uh, next slide, please. So now, okay, so this is the, this slide shows actually what are, according to our you know <laughs> view point of view what are the current uh, uh, limitation of uh, uh, lithium ion batteries and number one is safety of course this is uh, one uh, of the aspect that is not uh, negotiable batteries should be safe you don't want to hear any uh, people uh, burned or dying or something like that injured because of a battery okay as you know a battery is uh, uh, an energy the uh, storage device so uh, when this uh, energy is provided uh, uh, slowly not so fast uh, the battery is uh, basically safe very safe but for some reason uh, the, this energy is uh, provided uh, uh, in a very short time in seconds then we have a thermal runaway and a fire and a, a explosion and so on so this is number one, safety. Number two is the charging time. As I mentioned, this is another very important aspect of uh, the future of electric vehicles uh, because uh, the, the, uh, the end user, they don't want to spend uh, too much time, too long time in a, bat in a charging station, uh, especially if they are uh, driving for long distances. Of course, uh, if uh, the electric vehicle is confined to uh, 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 urban <clears throat> in a city, uh, the, the problem is not that uh, 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 crucial because uh, they can charge their car overnight. So they, there's a low power charging uh, system that enable you to use the 220 volt, but it takes uh, six hours or eight hours to fully charge the battery. It's fine. And then the battery, the, the full charge will give you uh, uh, about 400 kilometers uh, uh, range, which is okay. But for those who are professional for uh, transportation, like a taxi or uh, people who are uh, delivering uh, uh, goods or uh, in the cities or uh, intercities and so on, this uh, uh, charging time is very crucial and uh, we have to find solutions for reducing the charging time. Uh, the number three is the short driving range. So uh, today, electric, I mean, uh, internal combustion cars, according to, of course, the, the make and the, the, the way how people are driving, uh, the, the range can be between uh, maybe 400 kilometers to uh, 800 kilometers for internal combustion cars. For electric cars, the best cars now, I mean, uh, regularly is uh, 170 to 600 kilometers, but we have to extend the range to about 900 kilometers. And this is very challenging, as I said in the introduction. This go comes with the uh, <clears throat> uh, increasing the energy density of batteries. And the last but not the least is the short service uh, life of the battery. When uh, uh, the a battery <clears throat> in an electric car, the battery pack Account, account for more than 40% of the, the, the cost of the battery. So this is very high. And uh, you, you don't want to change your battery pack every other year because it's very expensive. So that's why the battery pack should last as long as possible and uh, uh, ideally uh, 10 years. So now uh, five years is there, uh, even eight years, but we don't have enough, you know, um, you know, uh, we have not collected enough data because this business of electric vehicles is uh, relatively recent, so we don't know. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that every year, uh, every uh, uh, bat uh, electric vehicle uh, 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 producer will come with a new type of battery, advanced batteries and so on. So there are many uh, year by year, I mean, the same manufacturer of batteries or electric vehicles they will be using uh, a battery that has been improved. So I think eight years is reasonable today, but uh, of course we need to keep the battery for uh, 10 years and uh, eventually 
uh, reach 1 billion kilometers before you change your battery pack. This has been claimed by some uh, electric vehicle manufacturers. Uh, 1 million kilometers, it's a very good record. And uh, so if one battery pack can provide this amount of kilometers, that's, that would be great for the, the, the end user. Next slide, please. Okay, safety. This is the, the kind of pictures we don't want to see. Uh, batteries can catch fire uh, either in electric cars or even, of course, in uh, mobile electronics. And this happens all the time, unfortunately. Just to give you a number, in 2023, there were close to 15 billion uh, lithium-ion battery cells were produced, 15 billion uh, worldwide. So even if we are below the PPM, so that one uh, battery out of one million might catch fire, it's still uh, 15,000 events, thermal events that can uh, happen every year, which is too too much. So we, we don't want to uh, see this kind of uh, events happening. So battery uh, safety is one of the key, key uh, uh, major issue with the, the lithium batteries, we have to reduce it. So as the, uh, the safety of uh, EVs should match at least the current uh, safety of internal combustion cars. Next slide, please. So the uh, uh, one of the major, I mean, the main uh, source codes of uh, uh, thermal runaway uh, in a battery is the occurrence of uh, an internal short circuit. Internal short circuit is when the anode and the cathode get in uh, mechanically or physically in, uh, in contact. So because of the difference in voltage between anode and cathode, there is a current leak inside the battery. And that current comes with some joule effect. So there is a heat and uh, the, uh, it can, uh, the reason why uh, a short circuit can appear either the uh, 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 separator uh, breaks somewhere or there is uh, some uh, solid uh, component like some uh, carbon materials that can uh, travel between anode and cathode and make a short circuit. And also during the fast charge of uh, lithium ion battery or at uh, cold uh, uh, low temperatures, the uh, lithium uh, instead of uh, uh, being stored between the graphene layer start to grow as a metallic lithium. And this uh, uh, lithium, metallic lithium is called the dendrite. It's a filament, very tiny filament of metal. And that filament can grow and cross the separator and uh, create a, a, a short circuit. Today, there is no reliable uh, technology that enable us to detect an early stage of an internal short circuit. There is no, okay? So unfortunately, uh, in most cases, when we started to uh, you know, uh, uh, act on the uh, thermal runway or the, the battery uh, temperature uh, start to uh, raise very fast, it's just to start to stop the operation of the system. Either the operation of the charger or the operation of the tool or system that you are using including a cell phone or uh, uh, an electric car. So in a battery pack, there is a BMS, battery management system, and among the data that this, uh, the system is collecting is the temperature. Now, uh, the problem with the uh, internal short circuit at the early stage, even though the, we have a local heat, I mean, uh, what we call the hotspot, this hotspot is not powerful enough to, uh, 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 influence the, the, the overall temperature of the cell. So we cannot detect uh, the, uh, an early stage of internal short circuits only by measuring temperature. It's only when the, really the thermal runaway starts and there is some smoke or something going out from the battery that you know, uh, uh, people start to uh, act uh, either by pouring uh, uh, water or some coolant or something uh, as, uh, uh, to cool the battery. Or even if there is a flame, uh, the, the, uh, the system, uh, we have a, a specific uh, a flame or fire extinguisher. <laughs> if we can go back to slide 25, please. 
Yes. So our approach here, this is our solution today, is to use the entropy of the battery as a, a Intel short circuit uh, <clears throat> detector. What happens is that uh, number one entropy uh, of a battery can be measured very, very simply by measuring open circuit voltage and the temperature. Okay, so if we measure OCV and the temperature very accurately, we can have the entropy because uh, basically the entropy is proportional to the temperature derivative of voltage. Okay, so uh, what happens is that uh, the dv over dt is in the order of 0 0.1 millivolt per kelvin. It's very low, 0 0.1 millivolt per kelvin. So in order to do entropy measurements, the temperature should be measured within this uh, uh, accuracy range of 0 0.1 millivolt. Uh, the same for the temperature. The temperature should be measured within 0 0.1 kelvin. Okay, if we have this, the, uh, we can uh, do the derivative, the dV over dt, and have entropy data. Now, when you have a leak inside the battery, the, there is a, a, it is like a, a, a discharge, it's self-discharge, and this discharge will affect the voltage. So the voltage will drop by something like a fraction of millivolt, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millivolt, which is the same order of magnitude as the millivolt that we measure from the from the temperature derivative. So we have two phenomena. One is the thermodynamics, and the other is the uh, internal leak, which are in the same order of magnitude, which means that we can, by measuring entropy, see whether a battery has an internal short circuit just by comparing the uh, uh, the entropy data of a battery that has uh, no internal short circuit and the one that has internal short circuit. So this slide on the right side, for instance, I can drive the voltage of this cell to 3.7 volt, okay? And then measure entropy at that point. It's very simple. It's a, it can be done very, very fast in a, a couple of minutes. And then I compare the data that I'm collecting at 3.7 volt. And if the data uh, fall on the solid line, which is the pink line, there is no internal short circuit. If it departs from this data, there is an internal short circuit. And then the system can measure this and uh, trigger an alarm that one cell has uh, 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 an internal short, okay? So this we can really uh, measure, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the embryonic, you know, uh, start of uh, an internal short circuit, uh, even if the, the the resistance between the anode and the cathode is a multi uh, a kilo ohm, okay, or even a mega ohm. Okay, we can measure this uh, difference between uh, the entropy data. So I don't want to spend too much time. This is very theoretical, but it works very well. Next, next slide, please. Next, please. So this is where actually art artificial intelligence will be uh, very uh, helpful. Basically. Uh, we have a chip that is attached to a cell. That chip can measure voltage and, and temperature within, you know, the uh, uh, accuracy limits that I mentioned, and then convert this uh, voltage and temperature to entropy data. And then the system will be uh, doing the calculation and uh, compare the, uh, uh, the data of a battery that has no internal short circuit and the one that has internal short circuit, if any. Okay, now the artificial intelligence is useful because as the battery is aging, the 3.7 volt that we have for a fresh cell, this 3.7 volt will be drifting. So by collecting data, the system knows which voltage is the best to measure the difference between uh, a battery that has uh, no internal shot and the battery that has an internal shot. So this is where actually the big data analysis and also the machine learning from each uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, cycle of the battery uh, can be helpful actually to detect the internal shot. And of course, if uh, we find uh, the system uh, detects an anomaly, it will uh, trigger an alert. So we expect really 
that this technology, which is very simple, if we have a chip attached to a cell and the chip is already measuring voltages and temperatures, convert the data to entropy and compare the data, we can save a lot of lives or maybe uh, people injured and burned and so on and make batteries safer. Next slide, please. Yes, I mean, in the interest of time, maybe in a couple of minutes, can we take a break and then answer some questions so we can go for a sure. couple of slides and then we can hear. Yeah. Okay. So, should I continue or you have questions or? Yes, yeah, so we can finish this section and then we can take questions. Because I don't want to stop okay. you in the middle of the presentation. So, I think we can. No finish problem, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> no problem. So, okay, now this uh, table shows the typical charging time for different uh, bat uh, uh, electric vehicles. And uh, the, the, the system shows uh, how many kilowatt hours uh, the battery pack has and the miles, the range, uh, the, the driving range, and also the, the charging time for different types of uh, chargers from the 3.7 kilowatt, which you can have at home, to 7 kilowatt, which is a little bit already special, to 22 kilowatt and 50 kilowatt and 150. We haven't put the 250 kilowatt of uh, Tesla. But anyway, in general, the charging time is very long. It's more than one hour, except if you are doing what we call a part charging between 0 to 80 percent or between the 10 and 90 percent or something like that. So the, the, the charging time can be lower. Uh, but uh, in general, the, there is uh, uh, no full charging. Uh, uh, I mean, full charging. There is no charging time below one hour, or from zero to hundred percent. Okay. So uh, this is where we. Uh, so in a way, the, the the reason why it takes too long time is because of the. Uh, uh, the, 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 the process or the technology that is used to charge a battery today, uh, batteries are charged based on the constant current, applying a constant current. So it's called CC. But there are two types of CC uh, protocols. One is the CCCV, which means that we apply a constant current until we reach a voltage, and then that voltage is applied. So it's called the CV, constant voltage. The other technique is uh, M, uh, M, MSCC, multi-stage uh, constant current, which means that uh, we apply a uh, high current to first uh, to, until we reach the, uh, the the highest voltage, and then we the current is dropped, and, uh, and then the voltage is dropped, and we start again. So the uh, the current profile for M, MSCC is a stairwise, and they're going down downstairs. Okay, so uh, we start with high current and then lower, lower current until the battery is fully charged. And of course, when we reduce the uh, uh, the, the current, uh, the, the the charging time is uh, extended to reach the same amount of uh, of energy. And the same thing for uh, CC. If we increase the the current, the temperature, the cell temperature will increase very fast, and then we reach the uh, safety limits of the uh, uh, of the battery. So uh, once we reach the safety limit, we have to reduce the 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 the, the, the constant current uh, in amps. So anyway, in both both cases, whatever CC based, we cannot charge a battery. In general, we cannot charge a battery in less than one hour. So uh, <clears throat> so that's why we thought about. Uh, so this is the typical profile of a CCCV uh, charging. On the left hand, you have the, in blue color, the constant current and then uh, followed by constant voltage. So when the constant voltage is applied, the current drops to some limits and then the uh, capacity, uh, you can see on the right hand, goes from uh, uh, zero to uh, 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 about 90%. As you can see here is, uh, the charging time is 100 minutes, which is close to two hours. Next slide, please. Okay, so maybe I can stop here and uh, just uh, take a question before uh, uh, explaining the our technology, the KVI technology for fast charging. Sure. 
Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, uh, Rashid. Uh, so, uh, before I ask some couple of technical questions, where people want to know more about specific composition for electrolyte and uh, any changes happening, just I wanted to start with maybe a broader question. Uh, as you uh, narrated during your journey, it took almost anywhere from like 10 to 15 years for going from lab to commercial product. And then it took industry another maybe 10 or 15 years for going from initial commercialization to actually scaling to giga factories. Uh, but now with the uh, uh, better interconnected world where uh, you can co collaborate on research uh, across countries as well as with the availability of a lot more data and with machine learning tools, uh, do you see for the next generation batteries, the uh, uh, journey from lab to uh, mass scale production can be fast tracked? And if yes, how much? Can you share your thoughts on that? Well, definitely. I mean, the, the leap time between, like I would say, uh, uh, R&D or research, like in academic research finding to the implementation in uh, practical or commercial batteries, this time is shortened every, every yes, definitely. So uh, uh, I think uh, first because we learned a lot. Now uh, lithium-ion batteries are over 30, uh, 30 years uh, history. Okay, so we have learned a lot, you know, from uh, not only uh, the materials uh, like anode cathode materials uh, uh, production and also electrode manufacturing and also the battery manufacturing and so on. This has been uh, always uh, uh, lots of improvement and now we can really uh, uh, use this, uh, all this improvement to shorten the, the time between uh, the invention and the commercialization. Yes, definitely. Now, of, uh, the, the other thing is that in general, uh, the battery industry is very conservative. And uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 to put a battery in the, uh, in the market is to be like putting a new drug in the market. So it's, uh, it has to go through many, many tests. I mean, uh, of course, you know, the drugs, uh, some, you know, uh, biological tests on animals and so on before a human. But so here is just to see whether the, the battery uh, has enough, uh, you know, uh, energy, enough power, uh, enough safety, life and so on, it takes a long time because the, the worst case scenario is if we, you go too fast and you produce a battery and you neglected one, the aspect of the battery, and it's the end. If uh, you know, the batteries catch, start to catch fire, you know, if your, your, your business is dead because that's, you know, uh, the press will do it, uh, the internet, all the, you know, the networks say, hey, we have we taken a video of a, such card catching fire. People will not buy it, okay? Uh, even now, I mean, if you take a, a, the problem, I mean, the thing is that it is a new technology. It's a new era, as I said, electric mobility. So people will be less forgiving to a fire in electric car than a fire in internal combustion car. Okay, so this is because we are, you know, people are anxious because this is a new, uh, new, new, uh, new technology and so on. But uh, still, I mean, uh, again, I mean, uh, we have learned a lot, and um, I think uh, the the rates, uh, how far, how much people are confident about, uh, you know, the uh, performance of batteries has been increasing so much, and uh, I think uh, there should be no problem, except again, the problem maybe in some countries where with hot climate and uh, this is this is one of the uh, maybe uh, i mean uh, area areas of uh, uh, r&d that can be done in uh, in uh, in india and in the rest of uh, countries like in the middle east where temperature can be, can go ambient temperature can be higher than 50 degrees c so <laughs> uh, we have to think about how can we change the chemistry of batteries to uh, you know, increase the uh, the uh, uh, stability temperature or the limits of stability of the, uh, the temperature stability of the battery from today 60 degrees C to maybe 70, 80, 90 degrees C. This is another really very important area of uh, research that I will encourage people in uh, academia in India to enter 
because it means that we have to reconsider, you know, everything from the beginning, a new anode, new cathode, new electrolyte, new everything to develop a high temperature battery, a battery that can sustain high temperatures. So the problem is that uh, today batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries, basically from minus 20 to plus 50 degrees C. And basically we can shift everything. We keep this uh, difference like 70 degree difference constant. And then we just translate to plus maybe uh, plus 10 to 70 <laughs> instead of minus 20, 50. So that's, that's the, the maybe one area because uh, in India, of course, if you go to very cold areas in the mountains, temperature can be very uh, negative. But this is not this considered maybe very small part of the Indian climate. Uh, generally, Indian climate uh, temperature is higher than 10 degree, uh, even in winter time, <laughs> maybe more. So anyway, I mean, I just uh, saying that this is one of the areas where it will take time. Even if you have like an anode that is stable at uh, say 100 degrees C, a cathode that is stable at 100 degrees C and so on, an electrolyte and so on, between all this finding and putting this in the market, it will take another decade. Perfect. So, uh, Professor uh, Rashid, uh, uh, one just related question, because again, uh, for lithium ion batteries to reach the current stage, it has taken 40 plus years, uh, still lead acid batteries, which has been the workhorse for the industry for many applications have been around. But do you see, because many times I think media and sometimes even uh, uh, politicians are in a rush to find alternative to lithium. Uh, sometimes it is said because of maybe there is not sufficient lithium and we cannot scale up the supply chain. Uh, so what is your view on that? Like, do you think that in next 10 or even maybe 20 years, do we really need to find an alternative to lithium or with the kind of improvements what you are doing yourself as well as other industry players are doing? Do you see lithium ion as a chemistry with some different flavor of cathode, anode or electrolyte will survive for the next 50 years or longer? Okay, from my personal experience, okay, in the uh, late 70s and the first uh, half of the 80s, I attended many, many conferences about uh, intercalation materials, lithium ion batteries, and so on and so on. And the people who were working on rechargeable lithium batteries using metallic lithium uh, or uh, lithium alloys as the anode, they came to the conclusion it is impossible to make a rechargeable battery, safe rechargeable battery. Okay. So that was actually the, the, the belief many people believed from their experience that it's impossible to put a rechargeable lithium battery in the market. And we know that has been possible. So the same situation today, uh, you know, going from like today, about 270 kilowatt hours per kg to 350, 400, many, I mean, personally, I said, no, it's impossible, but I'm sure there will be a very smart engineer researcher that will find a solution that nobody thought about and they can bring this chemistry to the market. It's possible because potentially there are many materials that's, I mean, on the paper that we can increase the energy density. It's possible. It's not against any uh, principle of thermodynamics. It's possible. But again, uh, we have to be very creative and also think outside the box. The problem is people are thinking within the box, you know? So for instance, one of the uh, thinking in the 80s is whatever the uh, lit uh, the rechargeable lithium battery that we have to make we have to build it at the charge state at the beginning because the lithium metal is the anode so the, the the cathode should has no lithium or little lithium so the first operation is discharge i myself was convinced that all rechargeable lithium batteries should be at the charge state including prof Stanley Whittingham. Stanley Whittingham, he made lithium metal anode and titanium disulfide cathode. So he started by, by discharge. Only when Dr. Uh, Yoshino started with the discharge state, which means all the lithium is the cathode side and the first operation is uh, charging. It seems now to us very obvious. It's a, an egg and chicken problem. What is the first? Is it the, 
should we make a battery at the charge state or discharge state? Because we know we will make a hundred of cycles anyway. Okay. So when Dr. Yoshino built his first prototype, working prototype, the battery was at the discharge state. And believe me, it seems very simple, very simple. It revolutionized the, the system. Okay. So I think very simple ideas sometimes can, can have a very strong impact. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's possible, but uh, very difficult, <laughs> you know, to, to bring a, a new chemistry, uh, for instance, like a solid state. I don't know if we had questions about solid state batteries. Um, the problem with solid state batteries is that the, uh, if we are using uh, lithium metal as the anode, lithium is the lightest metal in the, in the, uh, uh, the, the periodic table, okay? Uh, the, the density of lithium is 0 0.53. It's a uh, half water, okay? So what does it mean? It means that we are using lithium as the anode. During the discharge, the thickness of the lithium layer is shrinking very fast, okay? So in order to have a continuum of the lithium ion, the separator or the electrolyte should follow this change in the thickness. Otherwise, there is a disconnection. So you disconnect or you, uh, you disconnect the anode from the electrolyte. And this disconnection increases the internal uh, resistance and the, the efficiency and so on and so on. So the, the people who are thinking to make a working uh, solid state battery have to, to develop a, a separator that change in volume. A spring, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it will not work. So the, it's not the anode side; it's mostly the electrolyte problem. It's the separator, the solid state separator. If it is solid, it's like a, a ceramic or glass ceramic or something like a sulfide or something like that. It's a solid state system with the you know the volume is not changing much because, as I said in the introduction, the amount of lithium in the electrolyte is constant. Whatever the state of charge of the battery, the amount of lithium is constant. So there is no reason why the uh, the electrolyte would expand or contract in volume. Sir, I think the two questions are related to. So typically in a battery, how much lithium is used as a salt, and uh, uh, do we think uh, as a as a world are we running out of lithium? Is there any concern on that, or do you see the amount of lithium availability is there? Plus with the recycling techniques coming in, actually lithium is not getting consumed in the batteries, so we don't need to worry about uh, uh, switching to alternate chemistries for running out of lithium. We may find a better chemistry and we may switch, but uh, do we uh, do you see any concern on the supply chain side? Because I've been seeing this question almost coming from 2004, 2005, when flywheel companies used to say that, oh, lithium ion batteries will never scale because they cannot, there is not enough lithium. And now we see even Australia is supplying almost 50% of the world's lithium. India had just started discovering the lithium, what we have, and then there is enough lithium exactly. in the seawater. So what is your view okay. on that? Well, uh, because every, I mean, again, the, the, the market is increasing. So investors are interested in like growing markets, of course. So now lithium prospection, mining, everywhere. I can tell you, I have been uh, called this week from Nigeria, you know, uh, a very high level you know, person from the Nigerian government called me. He said, Prof, you are welcome to come to Nigeria and uh, discuss with us about you know uh, uh, you know ways to extract uh, lithium from the mines. They have mines. They have many locations, and I can tell you many many African countries now looking for lithium, and they will find lithium anyway because lithium is uh, actually uh, less abundant, of course, than potassium and uh, and sodium. But we are discovering more and more. So personally, there is no risk of lithium shortage on Earth. Definitely no. Okay, because if you take only what uh, like uh, the uh, Alg uh, Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile, they have in their you know uh, uh, salinas, you know it's a liquid uh, uh, salt from the ocean, uh, very old oceans. Okay, uh, the amount of lithium uh, I did the calculations, you know, according to the amount, the percents, and the 
the, the, the volume and so on, there is enough lithium to power 1 billion cars. 1 billion, okay? So there's no problem with lithium. And uh, what's happened is that by the past, the, some of the lithium manufacturers started to say, oh, there will be a shortage. When you announce there's a shortage, the, the, the price will go up. So they make more money. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the geology. It's, not, it's just a business. Now, maybe the other components of the battery where there may be some risk is the, believe it or not, even in the phosphate, you know, uh, phosphate so far has been used mostly for fertilizers. My home country, Morocco, has 70% um, of the world reserves of phosphate. And the, the phosphate company has started LFP uh, production. I mean, they, they will start uh, maybe in a year or two years from now. But uh, if you do the calculation, because the problem with phosphate is not, recy it's not recyclable. You can recycle cobalt, you can recycle nickel, you can recycle a lot of things in a battery, except the phosphate, because uh, it's, it's not easy to, it's not, I mean, uh, how to say, uh, today, uh, cost effective. It's better to mine and uh, consume and it's irreversible, okay? And even when we, we use phosphate for fertilizer, it's irreversible. You cannot take the phosphate and make a PO4, P2O5 uh, from this, you know, it's not possible. So anyway, uh, there is a, a pressure, I mean, people do not mention it, but I think phosphate is one of the critical material now for lithium-ion batteries. And uh, I think also uh, uh, cobalt, uh, because cobalt is one of the uh, major components uh, in, in the uh, cathode material, either in uh, uh, LCO, pure cobalt, or in NMC. And even if uh, we use the 811 formulation of NMC, 80% of nickel, 10% of uh, manganese, and 10% of cobalt, because of the huge volume of cathode, we still need a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, of cobalt. The problem with cobalt is uh, the the country who has like 70 plus percent of the world reserve is the Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, they have unrest. They have uh, situations which are really critical for uh, number one uh, political stability, and also uh, they are having uh, kids, children, uh, you know, used for this, and uh, of course industry don't want to do that because this is very bad. So anyway, I mean, if you are announcing that uh, India has lithium, I'm not surprised, of course. <laughs> and, but you have also graphite, I think so. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you have, you have a lot of, comp you have also phosphate. Uh, there you have also, I think, uh, I don't know what uh, other uh, uh, metals, uh, maybe nickel or copper, copper uh, aluminum, all of these, uh, you know, materials that are used in lithium batteries. Uh, it can be made uh, homemade in uh, in India, okay? But uh, what Indian engineers and the mining industry and chemical industry has to uh, how to say master the control is the processes from the mine to the uh, lithium precursor or the uh, the metal oxide precursor or the uh, phosphate precursor and so on. It should be battery grade. Battery grade means that the purity should be very, very high. It's, uh, the impurity should be below one, 100 ppm. So this is another area of uh, you know, industry where you have to purify your uh, materials. And this uh, comes with a very high technology. It's a very high technology to purify even graphite, you know, re remove all the impurities, uh, iron, uh, transition metals, or other silicon or other you know, uh, graphite comes not only as a pure carbon, but sometimes it's only 80%, 90%, so 90, even 95% carbon. You have to remove the 5% impurities, and it's uh, another area of, uh, you know, R&D that can be done and uh, to, to master. I don't know about, you know, the graphite industry in India. I have visited Sri Lanka, but that was maybe more than 20 years ago, and I had the chance actually to go to the mine in Sri Lanka, and I collected one uh, uh, piece of graphite <laughs> from Sri Lanka. And this uh, graphite in Sri Lanka was very high purity. The, the carbon content was close to 99%. Uh, 
already. But in general, it is less than, of course, it is less than 80%. So you have to do this purification. So again, it's like the, the chain value goes from uh, mining, uh, industry, like uh, flotation and, uh, you know, uh, concentration and so on, grinding, mechanical grinding and treatment to the chemistry, chemical, you know, industry to battery industry. So this is all the chain that has to be, uh, and this is very important point, very important point that I have to, uh, you know, uh, raise now. Uh, if you want your battery to last, say, for 1,000 cycles, okay, what does it mean? It means that you have reached about 80% of the initial capacity of your battery after 1,000 cycles, okay? If you calculate the efficiency, charge-discharge, one cycle, in order to reach 1,000, it should be close to four nines. It's a 99.98 or 99.97% efficiency. In order to have 99.9 plus efficiency, every component of the battery should be higher efficiency. Okay? So this is why lithium-ion battery is very, very, I would say, uh, challenging chemistry. Because to, to reach this level of purity of the materials and also the purity, not only chemical purity, but also the structure, the crystal structure purity of the uh, anode and the cathode. Okay, that's very important. So anyway, I think there's still a lot, a lot of space to, uh, 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 how to say, improve uh, the current lithium ion batteries uh, in India. Now, the uh, what are the other question? Uh, recycling. Yes, recycling, I haven't mentioned this, but of course this is another uh, very fast growing industry. It is uh, profitable. You can uh, uh, recycle uh, lithium, uh, you can even recycle graphite, but also at the beginning the recycling was mostly about cobalt and uh, copper. So the other components was not so important. Now we recycle lithium, we recycle copper, nickel, manganese, Everything can we can recycle. Uh, very important. Now, for recycling, it is very important that the battery can, uh, the chemistry of the battery can be recognized because you don't want to mix oxide and phosphate, you know, for recycling because it will not be recycled as the same, same chemistry. You don't want to put nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium together with lithium ion batteries. This is terrible, yeah. okay? So at the beginning, you have to sort all the chemistries separate and recycle, you know, chemistry like metal oxide or metal phosphate separately. Otherwise, you cannot make it, I mean, uh, economically. So you will lose a lot of money. And uh, so um, I think um, uh, there are many techniques now developed for recycling, either uh, based on uh, mechanical grinding and so on. Uh, which I personally I don't like. It's very <laughs> I don't like what we they call black mass. A black mass is a, a system where you find everything <laughs> all together, and uh, uh, there are the, the pyro, you know, high temperatures also uh, this develop. But I think there is probably another chemist. I mean, uh, uh, technology that should be developed, especially in India, because you have a very smart people with the artificial intelligence and IT and so on, is uh, actually to take a battery pack and use uh, uh, robots. So the robots will dismantle the battery pack and take the cells and automatic opening of the cell, automatic taking out the, the battery pack and so on, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the stacking of anode, cathode and separator and uh, another system that separates the three components and so on. I think this is the future. This is the future because then you have only anode, only cathode. You don't need yeah. to mix them and then to, uh, you know, and then separate them. That costs a lot of money. So this is an area where I would uh, encourage people to think about developing robots that can take a battery pack from an electric car and at the end, of the, the, the chain, you have the anode and the cathode and the separator and if the components are separated and then they can recycle them much easier.
Okay, so that's that's a source fact, of uh, Next week we are hosting almost 180 companies in the complete battery manufacturing and supply chain uh, for uh, India battery manufacturing and supply chain summit in Hyderabad. So we'll definitely bring it up. Already there are almost around 10 companies working on recycling, but with the traditional methods. So. Uh, we'll definitely yes. encourage them to look at the uh, mechanical separation and maybe direct recycling as a uh, path forward. Uh, in fact, one thing which has been personally exciting for me is that when five years back when I started talking about battery manufacture in India, many times people used to laugh at me that, oh, how can India ever develop this? We are too late. We cannot do it. Uh, but now, uh, uh, when three years back we first hosted the battery manufacturing uh, summit, we had around 20, 25 companies participate. And this year we already have 180 companies registered so it shows that how the interest is growing and uh, the as you said in your charts uh, the industry is still at an early stage it is although yeah it has come from maybe 10 gigawatt hour in uh, 2010 to now maybe uh, more than 1000 gigawatt hour and it will go to maybe 5000 gigawatt hour by 2030 but even 2030 or 20, uh, uh, 2035 40 demand is going to be another 5x or 10x that means that 80 or 90 percent of the battery manufacturing which will be there in 2035 is still not established so uh, i have been uh, urging most of the bureaucrats and uh, industry leaders to not concede the game uh, in the first 10 percent of the race i think there is still long way to go and with the pace of innovation what is happening i think there is a lot of opportunity uh, one question in the uh, asked by audience is do you see shift happening from li pf6 in the electrolyte to LIFSI and if yes, uh, will LIFSI overtake the requirement for LIPF6 in coming time? Well, unfortunately, we haven't found any better than LIPF6 today because there are many, I would say, um, uh, uh, I mean, requirements for an electrolyte, okay? And number one is, of course, the stability, the chemical and electrochemical and thermal stability, number one, and the cost, number two, and of course, providing uh, a high conductivity, ionic conductivity to the system, uh, and also uh, can be used within a large, uh, wide range of temperature. So if you put all these conditions together, okay, there is no one single salt that's have the best of everything so it's all a matter of uh, compromise so uh, lithium uh, hexafluorophosphate so far has been the one providing the best compromise it doesn't mean that for another maybe niche market applications if the temperature is different or uh, you know the cost or something like that is not a problem yes there's a chance that other Lithium salts can be used, you know, in uh, lithium ion batteries. That's for sure. Uh, the other thing is very interesting with the lithium uh, uh, hexafluorophosphate is the uh, the SEI. The formation of uh, the SEI on the anode, which is a, a, a layer, just to explain to the audience, this layer that uh, forms on the surfaces of the graphite anode, which prevents actually the solvent from co-intercalation and also prevents the self-discharge of the, the, the battery. So this layer, if the, uh, we have phos uh, uh, fluoride, fluorine, flu fluoride materials uh, in the electrolyte, the, 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 this uh, uh, SEI uh, operates much better because uh, the reduction of this uh, PF6 reduces to LIF and PF3. LIF is very stable lithium salt, and the layer is only a few nanometer of LIF together with lithium carbonate and so on. And so you have to to have this uh, uh, the, the, the 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 graphite particle should be covered by the SEI everywhere. Otherwise, you have the possibility to co-intercalate the solvent, and then you have the expansion of the uh, the graphite. So that's why, by chance, I don't know exactly the, the mechanism, but by chance, LIPF6 has been the best the choice lithium salt for lithium ion batteries. But again, I mean, uh, there may be other formulation of 
organic inorganic salts uh, with the uh, uh, fluorine uh, that can be used, uh, you know, efficiently. The uh, LIPF6 costs a lot of money. It's very expensive because uh, it uses so-called the fluorine chemistry. So uh, you need to use F2 gas to make a PF5. And the PF5 together with LIF makes LIPF6. Okay, so uh, fluorine chemistry is present in, in India, of course. You have fluorine, you have companies who make fluorine chemistry for nuclear or something applications, okay? But uh, that's a good news. It means that uh, LIPF6 can be made, produced in India without any problem. And by the way, one of my best friends, Indian, uh, Dr. Meshri, I don't know if you know him from uh, Advanced Research Chemicals in Oklahoma, in Tucson, Oklahoma. He, he, he masters the LIPF6 uh, chemistry. Now he retired and he uh, sold his business, but uh, when I was in California, I used to visit him many times, and we are still good friends, so uh, personal friends. But he, I mean, you have the the best competent scientist or engineer uh, on on the fluorine chemistry. So I think you, if by chance you, I, I think he still goes to India because he likes, uh, of course, his country, and you can have him as a guest, uh, you know, <laughs> for your uh, battery conferences, and he. Can yeah, speak maybe about July like we'll try to bring both of you together uh, for the India Energy Story. Oh, Japan. that will be great. That will be great. Yes. <laughs> Rashid, the last question before I let you to go back to your presentation and finish about some of the AI tools, what you're developing is uh, maybe I'll try to answer it quickly and you can add on. Is a question where I think uh, the, the uh, Mr. Nagesh has asked that uh, uh, EV prices are higher and battery price is equal to 50% of its price when EVs will become cheaper than IC. To some extent, I feel this is a little bit, uh, I think, delayed question because yes, I think when EV started coming in, the battery prices were 50%. But right now, if you see, I, like for example, Tesla cars which sell for anywhere from 70,000 to uh, $100,000, the battery pack size is under 100 kilowatt hour, and Tesla, the cost of the battery pack is less than $120 per kilowatt hour. That means the battery price of out of the Tesla vehicle is only around twelve thousand or maximum fifteen thousand uh, dollar. So that means it is less than twenty twenty five percent of the cost of the vehicle. So this fifty percent, which has I think got stuck. Uh, I think there are two numbers which are stuck in lithium ion side. One is that there is only five percent recycling happening, and rest goes into landfill. Uh, which I think again is a not uh, right uh, statistics anymore because lithium ion all the content are very valuable and there is recycling happening and especially I think that uh, landfill problem was more for consumer electronics where collecting it back was a problem but now with EVs or stationary batteries almost 100% batteries will get recycled and the second thing is this notion that EVs 50% cost is because of batteries, which I think is no longer true. Now, most of the electric vehicles, at least what we are tracking, the cost of the battery is anywhere from 20% to maybe 35% at max. And that's where maybe fast charging or battery swapping are some of the solutions, which can allow you to even have a smaller battery pack with faster charging, which will allow you to actually further reduce the cost of the batteries. But irrespective of that, I think in terms of the, when you look at the vehicle ownership cost, Typically, two third or even more cost is going into paying for the fuel for the vehicles. And since with electric vehicles, that cost is almost one fifth, we should stop asking for electric vehicles which are cheaper than IC vehicles because a 10 lakh rupee electric vehicle, you will be paying 20 to 30 lakh rupees in a lifetime for paying for uh, fuel. Whereas even if you buy a 15 lakh vehicle, which is 50% costlier, you will be paying only maybe 4 lakh or 5 lakh rupees in the total lifetime for charging that. So it is definitely a lower cost of total ownership and is that's my view. Professor Rashid, do you want to add anything or uh, did I miss something well, in this? Uh, I fully agree with you that actually the uh, the part of the battery, the cost of the vehicle will only decrease with time. The problem is if we look at the world map now, and uh, uh, the uh, battery manufacturers 
they, to uh, produce like a gigafactory, big gigafactory. They invested a lot of money. It's a matter of uh, maybe five to ten billion dollars. Okay, so everyone who you know puts this amount of money, they want to have a return on investment. Okay, so even if a battery pack will cost them like one hundred dollar per kilowatt hour, they will sell it for two hundred to the to the margin, so they can actually reduce the for the return on investment. Okay, the thing is that this return on investment will be lower and lower with time, of course, you know, because the so the Chinese started much earlier, okay? So they have already, you know, their investment, they have already returned on their investment. So they can now provide a battery that is in the dollar per kilowatt hour will be the lowest, even lower than 100 dollar per kilowatt hour. Whereas Europeans who started to make batteries only two years ago, they invested 100 billion dollar total in Europe in the gigafactories. So the price of batteries, they will not compete with the Chinese. It will be difficult for them to, to, to compete with the Chinese. But on the long, long term, after maybe 10 years from the beginning of the, you know, the gigafactory, 10 years later, I think the trends will be the same, which means that the, uh, the cost will be going lower and lower. That's right. So um, I don't know the situation in India because uh, uh, there are many, how to say, business models. Uh, when uh, in France, Renault started to make electric vehicles because uh, Renault is the number one uh, lithium-ion battery, I mean, uh, electric vehicles produ producer maybe in, uh, in Europe. Uh, they came with a model that is very, very interesting. When you buy an electric car, you pay only for everything except for the battery. You are not the owner of the battery. Okay, so you give it to you as a lease. You lease the battery, which means that every month you pay $100 to Renault for the battery. And if your battery becomes weaker, they will change it for you. And you still pay $100. But this $100 is still less than what you were paying in the IC car. So this model, I think, is really very interesting because uh, the, the, the user, I mean, why do you want to be the owner of the battery <laughs> after all? <you> know? <laughs> so as, as long as the battery is working and uh, you know how many miles you drive every year, you can make an average, you know how much it costs you in gasoline, and then you, you put less, like 80% of that, and you are, you are, you are making, uh, you know, you're saving money. So I think this model, is very smart and uh, probably maybe can be inspired in India to you know make people less anxious about how many uh, number one uh, the cost of the battery uh, the, the cost of the car is too high because it includes the battery and number two how long can I keep the battery yes. so as long as you are not the owner that's it so I think this is this is a, a good solution economical solution yes. for you know for uh, electric vehicles in, in, in India. Yeah, so in India, flavor of this with battery swapping is becoming very popular, particularly for commercial vehicles, especially the last mile delivery vehicles with uh, electric yes. two wheelers and three wheelers. So uh, that's another thing where uh, this is a very interesting option. Uh, Professor Rashid, I know you wanted to talk about the NLB uh, tech technology, what you have introduced. So uh, Vishal, if it's okay, can we go back to the slides and provide Professor Rashid another five minutes to uh, wrap up the presentation? We, we can do two things. One, yes, I can go through it, but uh, I, unfortunately I have to leave because I have another another appointment in, uh, sorry, I didn't know how long time. This is the first time. So what I suggest, we can, you know, program another session to okay. continue. This is part one. We can do a part two if, uh, you know, it's possible. And after I come back from a trip to Europe and to Morocco, by the middle of, uh, of February, I can do part two. And I think uh, I have, I mean, uh, the audience, they have, they have to take the time to digest all the information that we, we uh, I, I provided. And maybe they will come with the new questions in, the, in February, you know, <laughs> about the, uh, part one. So if we go to the part one, the first thing, do you have any questions, uh, part two? 
before starting part two, I will ask, do you have any questions about part one? And I will address the, the, the other question that uh, uh, the, the audience, and then I will talk about, you know, what we are doing to solve the problem of fast charging. Is this okay? Yeah, that's uh, perfect. So Vishal, handing it back to you. Thank you for the wonderful uh, conversation. It's almost infectious to see the both of you speak with so much passion about um, your work that you've done over a lifetime, really. Um, Dr. Yazumi, I am uh, very, very well aware you can speak two days straight on the topic and possibly uh, finish, let's say, 10% of the work you've done in the area. So uh, we are happy to host uh, multiple sessions going forward as well. Uh, we have recorded this session for a much wider audience, and when you're back, uh, from Europe, uh, we'd be happy to collate uh, all the questions. I'll make sure that your presentation's out uh, for everyone to consume. Uh, Rahul, uh, very uh, thankful for contextualizing this conversation for the Indian context and bringing in the market insights. Um, last word uh, to Dr. Yazumi and Rahul, and we'll close post that. Okay, well, again, I mean, uh, uh, I have other businesses, you know, in India, you probably know my. Uh, you know, uh, sitting in the uh, uh, New Energy Council of uh, Reliance. Uh, that's uh, the reason why I'm still having uh, some business in India, and it's very exciting I mean, to to be part of this, uh, uh, you know, Reliance Group, which is one of the most, uh, you know, prestigious industrial group in India. And uh, I, yeah, okay. I hope actually if uh, I have another opportunity to. Uh, visit uh, India this year. I would be more than happy uh, for you know the uh, any battery event. So uh, I am in Singapore, so it's not too far away, and the, the time the time difference is not too too big, so uh, it should not be a problem. So again, thank you very much, both of you, for you know having me, and uh, I would be happy you know to set up another. Uh, uh, a meeting, another presentation uh, in uh, in February next month. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Rashid, and again, thank you very much, Vishal, and uh, the Capacity Building Commission for organizing this. Uh, I have been studying all type of energy storage technologies since around 2004, so almost now 20 years. And the way uh, uh, the technologies are evolving, as well as the applications are evolving, I think it is just amazing. I think energy storage technologies are going to be the linchpin for the clean energy transition, what everyone is hoping for that we achieve by 20. 30, 2040, again, different countries have slightly different timelines, but it is very clear that I think with the pace at which the solar, wind, and other renewable technologies have grown, and now with uh, especially lithium ion batteries as well as other advanced storage technologies, uh, scaling the uh, manufacturing uh, uh, leap, uh, it is becoming now renewable energy a uh, reality, a uh, dispatchable renewable energy a uh, reality, uh, which will help us decarbonize many sectors. Uh, things like even green hydrogen, I think, again, renewable energy plus energy storage is going to be the one which is going to make green hydrogen a reality because you cannot use uh, uh, electrolyzers with 20%, 30% utilization factor. So I think uh, the invention what uh, Professor Rashid have uh, enabled uh, almost 40, 45 years back is still relevant and it will remain relevant for uh, our next uh, at least two decades, if not 50 plus years. So. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Rashid, uh, uh, for being Excellent. so wonderful and uh, sharing the journey and sharing your insights. And uh, it's really exciting to have you play a key role uh, through Reliance in the India's journey. And I look forward to hosting the next webinar as well as personally hosting you in India, in New Delhi, uh, during the India Energy Storage Week from 1st to 5th July. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks much to the audience for staying well past over the time. Um, thank you, gentlemen.